Okay, let's go. Welcome to the second episode of Let's Speak English. Oh no, Let's Speak English. We've changed the name of this podcast. Why? Because I want to reach a worldwide audience and I think English is more for Spanish speakers. So I know that this podcast is not only for Spanish speakers, but for everyone that wants to listen to it. Leave me a comment and tell me where are you from? Today I'm in my closet. Yes, I'm inside of my closet because it's better for the audio. The clothes, they absorb the echo. I'm, of course, next to my little dog, Chestnut, and I'm drinking a cup of tea. If you're listening to this right now, I am really grateful to have your attention. I'm really grateful that you are here, and I really appreciate you. Thank you for choosing my podcast and give me the opportunity to connect with you and learn something together. Today is February of 2022. After I finish recording this podcast, I'm going to watch the Super Bowl, which is something I have no idea about. I really do not understand the game. Even though I do not understand it, it makes me feel that I belong here, that I'm part of it too. And it's not a thing that they do, it's something that we do. So for me, it's important to be part of those cultural events. Today, it's been like five years that I've been watching it every year. I've been watching it for about five years now. And so far, my favorite thing about the Super Bowl is the halftime show. I love to see Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, J-Lo and Shakira. What? The singing part is my favorite part and also the commercials. I absolutely love American commercials. They are super funny, even though sometimes I don't understand it. Sometimes I don't understand it either because there is a lot of inside jokes. I wanted to give you a little quick introduction about my life. If you're new here, my name is Andrea. I gave a little introduction about myself on the first episode, so I recommend you checking that out after if you are curious about who I am and why am I recording this podcast and how listening to podcasts is useful. Remember that you can get the transcript of this episode linked down below. It's really useful to read along with me so that way you can practice your pronunciation and also it can help you understanding way better. So last month in January of 2022, I had a really special visit from friends. My in-laws came to visit for the first time. They stayed with us for two weeks. And honestly, my biggest concern was the language, the language barrier. Because even though I've been learning French for a while, I don't feel confident yet to have a conversation for two straight weeks in French. It turned out really well, way better than what I expected. So that's why I want to share with you a little survival guide to communicate in English or in any language, really. I think it would be useful for any language. One of the things that I've struggled the most in English was my pronunciation. That's why I've created a pronunciation workshop. The sounds of English. I teach you every single sound of English, starting from consonants to vowels and diphthongs. Enroll today using the code SPEAKING to get 80% off. Visit the link on the notes of this episode and use the code SPEAKING to get 80% off in your pronunciation classes. Start the year with the right foot. I love learning new things, but who has the time to really read nowadays? 
That's why I love podcasts and audiobooks, and that's why I love Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Every month, members get one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection, and access to daily news digests from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Washington Post, as well as guided meditation programs. Try it for free using the link that I left on the notes of this episode. So you have one month to try Audible, my favorite way to learn. And remember, when you talk, you only repeat what you know. But when you listen, you may learn new things. So I did a little survival guide with some tips and things that I used and were really helpful for me. And hopefully they will be very useful for you too. In case you have a situation like me where you need to talk with the native speakers, but your vocabulary or you have very basic phrases, let's get started. Uh, The first recommendation, the first tip is to have a clear objective or a clear goal or specific level that you want to achieve. My goal in French is to communicate with my in-laws and to be able to talk in a very informal environment. Maybe for you, uh, it's the same. Maybe you have the same goal. You want to learn English because you want to just talk to your family that lives abroad. You want to talk to your cousins or you want to just go around the city without any problems and that's it. But maybe you want to take it to the next level. Maybe you need some business English or maybe you need like to work in a kitchen or to work in a a healthcare environment or medicine um, related uh, field. So what is your goal? What is exactly what you need to achieve? When you have a clear goal, you can get your hands on relevant content for you. Let's say you want to be a chef. So you would go on YouTube, for example, you would go on YouTube or Audible or listen to books that are related to food or how to prepare the food or things that are important to know in a restaurant, maybe safety protocols or things like that. So once you have a clear objective, it's easier to set up a studying routine that works for you. So once we have that, once we have that clear, you need to customize your learning journey for you because you don't want to learn things that are not related to what you need in the moment. So once we have that, we can focus on most frequent (laughs) frequent. I don't know why I cannot say that right. Once we have that, we can focus on most frequent words, most frequent words, or most frequent phrases. Once we have our goal, we can focus on most frequent wor- most frequent words in our field, or most frequent phrases in in potential scenarios that we would be exposed to. For example, when I was with my in-laws, I really wanted to talk, I really wanted to ask them a lot of questions about their childhood, their lifestyle, what do they like, what do they eat. I wanted to make them as comfortable as possible. So I really focused on daily activities, vocabulary, and I focus on how to make questions in, in French and how to, how to talk about the past and how to talk about the present because for me that was my main goal and that's something that I was uh, already planning to do. I didn't plan the conversations in my head because I'm not that crazy, but I had an idea of things that I should focus on. I I had an idea of potential conversations that I could have with them. And I 
got ready in those um, subjects. Another thing that helped me to prepare to my only French two weeks, it was to find similarities with my native language. So it was really useful to look for similarities in my own language because whenever I didn't know a word, I would try to French... Uh, wait. To franchise. To say that word in a French way. So whenever I didn't know a word in French, I would find the word either in English or Spanish and I would try to make that word French. And sometimes it would be funny because sometimes I was lucky and the word actually it said like that. But other times I was just making funny words in this language. So it was really an experience. I had to use a lot of my creativity to find ways to say things and, you know, to, to make it work. Really trust that you can do this. Our brains are super powerful and we are really able to assume or to imagine how would you say other things, all these things in this language. I don't know if that even makes sense, but really don't be shy. Just trust yourself. It's okay. You can do this. If you're in the same situation as me where you need to speak with people a very informal way um, for the first time you're meeting them, Another thing that was really helpful was just to go on Google. Go on Google and find questions to ask because it's easier to ask questions than to answer to questions. When you have to answer to questions, you need to, you know, find more words. It's better to be the one doing the questions. <laughs> That's a really useful tip. When you are with people that don't speak the lang that don't speak your language, Be the one asking the questions. I mean, do you agree that it's way better to control the conversation, even if it's just by asking questions, than be the one following the native speaker's conversation? Try to control the conversation. Always. Or at least try to control the conversation most of the time. So that way you do like a little sentence and you can just listen and learn, learn a lot. And then when they ask you, what about you? You can use kind of the same vocabulary that they use. You can use some phrases that they use. So you have more preparation. Sometimes my vocabulary was so basic that I had the feeling that I was talking like a kid or I was speaking like a kid. But... As I said, don't be shy to be speaking like a kid because, you know, what is important with languages, and that's the message that I wanted to say in this podcast, what is important with, with languages, and that's why we use it. The language is just a bridge to connect with people, to communicate, and to deliver a message and to build a bond between people. Languages are meant to show your emotions. Languages are made to share beautiful moments together and to learn from each other. It's beautiful to have the opportunity to learn from people that come from different backgrounds, from different countries, from different from a different way of living. They think different and it's so beautiful to have the opportunity to Another thing that you can do if you don't speak the language, you can use other communication methods. Because did you know that 80% of the communication is not verbal? So I wanted to talk about a few ways to communicate even without words. You can also communicate without words. So really, I think that not knowing the language or not knowing a lot the language is not necessarily an excuse to not talk to the person because when you really, really want, you can communicate by eye contact, gestures. You can talk with your hands a lot. You can say what you want. Physical contact, fa facial expressions, posture. 
keep in mind that when you don't know the language, people cannot know your personality. But you can show your personality. You can, they can have a sense of your personality if you emphasize your gestures, if you emphasize the eye contact, the posture, the facial expressions, the physical contact. Make an effort. Really, make an effort. That's the other tip that I want to share with you. Make an effort. I know it's not easy all the time. I know we are constantly translating in our heads and we can be a little bit slower than usual. But trust me, they will show appreciation for the effort. But don't get stressed. Don't be shy. Just make an effort and they will really appreciate it. You know, when you are a good person to people, people love that. People would appreciate you for who you are. Use the language not as an excuse, but use the language as a bridge to to connect with everybody. I hope these few tips were very, very useful. They were very useful for me. I am sharing everything that I learned through this beautiful experience. We had an amazing Two weeks with my in-laws, I learned so much from them. I was super spoiled and I had a lot of fun. Honestly, it was a beautiful experience. As I said, I was really stressed, but it turned out very well. I really, really love when you send me messages and when you talk to me because I have the feeling that I'm not alone. If you want to continue this conversation with me, I'm going to leave you my contact information so that way you can send me an email, a DM on Instagram, whatever you want. I would love to hear your stories and what's your opinion. And also, I like for you to tell me what would you like to talk in the next episode. Thank you so much for being here. I hope all these tips were super useful. And, and let's speak English together on the next time.